point of our exercise this morning is for our state legislature to truly understand the impact on the services we provide, on the communities that feel most threatened and should feel most threatened <coughs> if our county is asked to absorb over $315 million in additional costs at a time when our cupboard is bare. So what I'd like to do is first have, we will do this in the order, Kristen Tribble, please come forward. Lovely, I get to be first, okay. <laughs> okay, so as the um, leader of a parent organization, I'm coming at this from a parent perspective. What do I ask of my kids when there's a problem? What's the right thing to do? Well, the right thing to do isn't to cause a problem and then foist it on someone else. So right now, we ask our leaders in Annapolis to do the right thing, find the solution, and don't just foist it off on someone else. Thanks. Mr. Rodich. Good afternoon. Um, just say it as simply as I can. What, what the state has done in terms of their funding of the pension plan over the years has just frankly been unconscionable. As Mr. Israel pointed out in, in, in his comments, this was a very robust, fully funded uh, plan, and the way that they manage it has just driven the, the, the whole funding for, for this thing into the tank. Well, a lack of prudent, responsible fiscal planning on their part doesn't constitute a crisis or shouldn't consti constitute a crisis for this community. So we're really counting on our legislators to step up to the plate here and do the right thing and find an alternative. Thank you. I'm a little shorter. Um, I think that as we look at this particular dilemma before us, we're faced with the situation where people are trying to just move the chess pieces around without really putting the game into a winning situation. And I think that we need to really have the state focus on fixing the problems that they have, uh, they have actually created these problems over the years. And to fix it will enable us to look forward rather than trying to each year decide how we're going to make the cuts in order to meet these demands. And I think we need to just pull together and make sure that the state does what the state is supposed to do, which is fix the problems it created. Thank you. I'm Art Brodsky from the Montgomery County Library Board. This is a county of about a million residents. Of those, roughly two-thirds, 670,000, are active library users we value our libraries. Over the past four fiscal years, you can take a look at this chart and see this long stripe here. This is the cut of the library budget. Now we're finally, thanks to County Executive Leggett, to President Berliner and his colleagues, we're finally starting to see the light of day and put some money back into the libraries where the materials budget's been raised, the hours are gonna be a little more longer. With this goes through, all that minimal progress that we made is going to be wiped right away. As everyone else has said, the state is trying to push off its problems on the counties, and we're the ones who are going to get pushed off onto. It's time to stop the shift. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Marion Ein-Lewin. I'm standing here to represent the Primary Care Coalition of Montgomery County, which is part of HHS. Um, and we are very concerned that one of our landmark programs, Montgomery Cares, uh, which today provides health care for 30,000 under, underinsured individuals, poor individuals, most of them 100% below poverty, that their services will be diminished and cut. And this program has been shown to be enormously effective in keeping people out of emergency rooms, um, controlling chronic illness so they don't become severe illnesses. And these are the kind of programs that are now endangered with this kind of proposal. So I hope that all the good heads in Annapolis uh, will think of another way uh, to fund the pensions and that 
critical programs such as these will not be threatened. Thank you very much. Mr. Crawford, I'm gonna bring the mic to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity just to say a couple of words relative to folks with disabilities and, uh, and the issue of the, um, of the pensions. It, I guess the best way that I can sum everything up, in my view, is this is not about dollars and it's not about um, you know, governmental mechanisms and all that mishmash. I mean, I used to be a public administrator. I know what that's all about. But the reality is that this is about people and every person is worth it. And every person deserves to be cared about by other people. That's why we're in the community. And so I guess the only thing I would say is we can find a way if we want to. And I believe we do. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Susan Jenkins, and I'm the CEO of the Arts and Humanities Council of Montgomery County. We represent the creative sector, and um, this is not a creative way to, so, to solve a problem uh, <laughs> that has been uh, created by someone else. So we say that uh, you know the arts and humanities in Maryland are a huge economic driver, and we know that uh, shifting $47 million to Montgomery County will have an inordinately negative effect on our ability to continue to produce the kind of economic impact that would have the kind of in economic impact that we've had so I ask you uh, to uh, be creative and to think about ways to solve this issue uh, and to make to make it right for everyone do the right thing stop the shift good morning I'm Debbie Rankin I'm the executive director of the Montgomery Parks Foundation Montgomery Parks are beautiful, safe, and accessible places for people to spend time outdoors and as a family. And Montgomery Parks has endured more than its share of the last three years of budget cuts. And frankly, we can't take any more. Additional cuts would mean that we could be closing park facilities or entire parks. And I think that the people of Montgomery County just won't, won't tolerate something like that. And I hope that everybody can find a better way to do this than to do this on the backs of Montgomery County services. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jose Gonzalez, and uh, the stakes could not be higher. Um, I'm going to use my notes to make sure I'm accurate. Um, and on this particular issue, I would like to lend my voice to the Latino community um, and to represent the Latino Civic Association of Montgomery County. Um, that, as many of you know, is uh, recently being uh, constituted um, in Montgomery County to become an amplified voice to the Latino community. Currently, uh, we represent about 70 founding members um, in Montgomery County. We know that the current proposal by Governor O'Malley will inflict a devastating additional hardship and cuts to services um, that reach our residents residents of our community. More specifically, we are referring to services delivered at uh, youth opportunity centers through um, health and human services, police department, community organizations, MCPS programs, such as after school programs and Head Start. Therefore, the Latino Civic Association would like to express its rejection and opposition on behalf of our community um, to the current proposal. We want to be a voice to the Latino community, to be a sounding board and amplify their voice, and I'm pretty sure on this issue, we stand together as a community. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Josh Williams. I'm the president of the Metropolitan Washington Council of the AFL-CIO. Uh, last night at our executive board meeting of leaders of um, our workers in Montgomery County, in Prince George's, in Charles, Calvert, and St. Mary's County, 
our board unanimously adopted the resolution opposing uh, the governor's proposal to shift the pension to the counties. Uh, it is our position that this does not make any sense. This morning I went over and delivered this um, message to uh, County Executive Rashan Baker and pledged to him the support of organized labor uh, in opposing this proposal. I am here this morning to do the same thing with Montgomery County and to indicate to you that the organized labor movement will join with the uh, counties in our jurisdiction to do what it takes to ensure that this draconian measure is not imposed upon the county. This is really all it is doing is uh, shifting, taking money out of one pocket and putting it into the other, or uh, robbing one pocket <laughs> and robbing the second pocket. And instead of, instead of trying to solve a solution, what you're doing is just shifting the burden. Uh, we recognize it. It is not just a matter of the public workers, it is a matter of the burden on working families. And everyone here this morning speaks on behalf of our members who are the recipient of the services which is going to be affected in Montgomery, in Prince George's, in all of the counties. So I want to say to, to um, the, the county council and to the county executive that you can count on the organized labor support in making sure that your legislators, whether they're in Montgomery, whether they're in Charles, Calvert, St. Mary's, or Prince George's County, do the right thing, and that is do not impose the burden that is rightfully that of a state upon the counties. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, all of these folks will be available to the press should you have any additional questions. We thank you so much for your participation. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much for being here.